You now join me inside of the iX and uh, it's the end, the last drive for me. I have about an hour to bring it back to BMW and I'm actually swapping for a different car. But um, one thing I really love about this iX is this phone holder. I can just slide it right there. Not charging or anything, but just the perfect spot to just throw my phone or the keys or something. It's a perfect size slot at the perfect distance. And I really love that. So let's, uh, let's start the drive and share what it was like to live with this car for just a bit over 3,000 miles. Now I know that doesn't sound like much, but normally when I get to review cars, I usually spend only a couple hundred miles with them. I mean, sometimes even less if it's a quick first drive, sometimes it's only 50 miles. But one thing I really like about this is kind of how sporty it is. Now, this is the iX M60. It has all the spicy bits in it, right? So I dialed the sport mode to be as aggressive as it would let me go. And it lets you have oversteer on throttle, which is pretty great. So pulling out of here, for example, I should be able to get some opposite lock and just kind of rock. Uh, but there's no way to fully disable DSC. So if you want to call the iX M60 a performance car or a true M car, you're just out of your mind. It's so heavy. Um, and it's it's not really that well tuned. And part of this comes down to the steering wheel where I just can't get a good grip on it. Um, you know, in order to see the gauges, it needs to be quite high, which I don't mind, but my hands have to be up here because here they're kind of going the wrong way. So I haven't fallen in love with all the inputs yet. The brake pedal is okay. The accelerator pedal is okay. Um, and just really haven't fallen for a lot of the driving inputs. Now, what's really great is the steering at low speed with rear steer. This is quite magical. Every rear steering system is. It's not quite as aggressive as Mercedes. I think they took a, a good German approach to it. Come on, lady, let's go in your Jetta wagon. It's not a diesel. So let's pull out of here, see if we can get some action, shall we? <laughs> so a little sliding. I was wide open the whole time. And then you'll see as soon as I kind of got a little bit straight on the wheel and we stopped sliding a little bit, it just went wah. And that's one thing I don't love about this car is just the aggressiveness of the accelerator pedal um, situation. So if you drive the car smoothly, and I mean smoothly as in slowly, it's really quite nice and civilized and totally fine. Still almost the opposite of our e-tron where it requires a lot of input to get the thing to move, but e-tron's not that fast anyway. Here, uh, I mentioned it when I did the comparison of all three cars, but one thing I really don't like doing is, is driving this car around fast because it's a bit too sharp. It's almost uncomfortable. For example, even if I back it down and put it in efficiency mode, which should have the longest accelerator pedal, I put my foot down a little bit. If you do it quickly, it's like, bam, just so harsh. And what's happening is there's a slight delay from when you hit the accelerator pedal to where you actually are. And the BMW system sees this as like, you just went from like 20 to 80%, boom. So you must want everything really quick and it's a bit uncomfortable. The way other EV manufacturers do this is either just build in a bit of a um, artificial sort of uh, smoothing factor, or you could just be extremely accurate like Tesla and just do exactly with what the accelerator pedal is doing in real time. Um, but this always has a slight delay to the input and you really don't notice it if you drive it around smoothly, but there's it's almost lashy uh, in a sense where if you hit the throttle and then lift off for regen, it grabs a little bit too hard. And I find that to be a bit a bit annoying to be honest but before we get into the rest of the driving stuff let's talk about battery charging daily living all of these things bmw recommends an 80 percent maximum charging limit on the ix and you know what in fact i'm going to return it to them with that set that way this thing doesn't just sit fully charged forever and i really kind of like the inputs to iDrive with this uh, turntile knob the little iDrive controller but wow do you have to like get so used to and then it pops up 80%. Yeah, I know, I'm going to 80, don't worry. You have to get so used to where everything is because it's quite a convoluted setup. And there goes the music. And so you really gotta spend the time to figure out the UI system. Uh, and I think if you owned this car and lived with it daily, you'd find the few functions that you need and it'd be fine. One kind of really annoying thing about this whole system is there are no hard buttons for heated seats or AC seats. So right now I wanna put on the air conditioned seats. I gotta click the climate pulls up this menu. Then I got to remember which one's cooled seats, which is this one here. And then there's three levels of cooled seats. I can also put on auto climate control and that turned that off. And now I can go back. And now there's four levels in auto. There's off, low, medium, high, and very high on the cooled seats. The cooled seats also kind of suck. 
What doesn't suck are the heated seats. The heated seats are truly amazing because it heats the steering wheel, the, the arm bolster on the right side, where your elbow goes on the left, and even the top portion of the door on the left side where your elbow will go. So every surface that you could possibly touch is heated. I wish you could just turn that off and keep it to the, to the seat because sometimes I have back pain and I just want the seat back, not even the butt to get really hot. There's no way to separate all that out. So it's like they give you a million adjustment points for everything except a lot of the seating and driving settings because in terms of my modes as part of the iDrive system, they have these vehicular experience modes, not just like a sport eco normal mode, which is how, or comfort mode as BMW typically does it. And this is like changes the entire climate control, changes the screen design, everything around. So I find I drive the car in efficient mode 99% of the time. I actually prefer the longer accelerator pedal. Um, you don't get full power unless you use sport mode with launch control. But again, I think this car really works well when you drive it gently and nicely. It doesn't need to be a performance. Not everything has to be fast. And yeah, I know that's coming from me. Um, so I would, I would not consider the M60 version of this. It's not that expensive. I know I say that, and then I'm also going to tell you that it's $113,420. This is a lot of car for 113 grand. You get 111 kilowatt hour battery pack, gross capacity, 105 usable. You get huge range. You get great specs on paper and like, it's not slow. This thing rips and it's only $113,000 just to put that in perspective, because I know that sounds a bit crazy. The least expensive Model X from Tesla starts at 130. And this is the most expensive iX comes in at pretty much $20,000 less. So to me, that's the that's a bargain. That's a good deal. So I think BMW priced it very well. And I think the 50 is priced even better for like 10,000 less or 15,000 less, you can get a smoother uh, riding car with even more range because you have a different rear motor and smaller wheels you can spec. I would still get the 22s because I think they look really nice. Um, yeah, but I'd go for a 50. And I, and I don't like how hard the suspension is in this car. I think I would be better if it was smoother. It's yelling at me because I hit the line. The driver assistance, by the way, is truly phenomenal in this car. Truly phenomenal. They did a great job with this. So there's a lot of good stuff here. We have navigation with route planning. I don't trust BMW's route planning. I think it's actually pretty weak, but nice to see them try. I just turn that off and do it manually. There's no plug in charge on this car at the moment, which is kind of a bummer. But my understanding is it does precondition the battery pack on the way to a fast charger. So when I do charging tests and things like this, if you want to warm the battery up in winter time, you just put the charger in the nav. One thing I've noticed about, and I know I'm bouncing around a little bit, but I'm just going as my thoughts come up. One thing I've noticed about charging the iX is it seems to be pretty consistent in varying temperature ranges. Now, I'm not sure how that works in the middle of winter because I, will, I haven't tested it in cold weather, but at least everything from 70 to 115 degrees I've had this car in, and it's just charged the same no matter what. So pretty impressive thermal management for the battery pack. We noticed the same with the i3. The i3 had a great battery pack in terms of thermal management and it sustained huge performance to low state of charge, which this thing will still do full launch control down to 4%, which is just truly insane. 4% state of charge doing launch control. No other car can do that. No other car can give you this, the full power down that low. So BMW has done an amazing job with their battery pack tuning. I've never seen it lose even one mile sitting overnight or 1% from phantom drain. It's just very, very high levels of calibration. And what's cool is I actually met the dude who was responsible for the high voltage battery pack architecture and charging of the iX in Germany at a whim at a charging station. He was testing an iX before they went on sale and he was so cool. He's like, I watch your stuff and you know, we know what's really important in a car. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'll believe it when I see it. Nice iX. And I like checked out the inside. Nicest guy. And now that I'm testing one, I'm like, wow, yeah, this dude's legit. He knew exactly what was needed from this battery pack, which was big regen at any temperature or state of charge level, big power output down low, no phantom drain, no confusion with BMS. It's just rock solid. So you get a very high quality engineered product here. I just think the, the software guys who tuned the driveline got a little bit too aggressive with the throttle. And I said the same thing about the i4. It's the same logic as the i4. So I think that's actually one of my biggest issues with the whole thing. 
Um, but let's talk about what we're doing now, which is getting on the highway and cruising. I'm gonna put it on cruise control, assisted driving activated, and it will pop up with assist plus ready right here on the screen. If I look ahead and just kind of put pressure on the wheel for a minute, it's gonna recognize I'm doing everything correctly and then it will go into full hands-off driving mode momentarily. So let's hope we can get it in there. There's no extra button you have to hit. There we go, these have gone green, the messages have popped up, and now my hands are off. It's a full hands-off eye tracking system. And I believe it works to about 40 or 45 miles an hour in this mode. You can still set the speed to whatever you want and then it'll come up. But how nice is this, sitting in traffic, the car's doing everything. It makes lane changes on A roads and B roads, and even in tight traffic situations, it's a very aggressive lane change. I actually was planning on running the Hogback Driver Assistance Challenge because I think this would have smoked everything today, um, but no one's around to shoot it with me. Everyone's out on other shoots and I need two people to do it. So perhaps I'll get an IX back and we'll do the Hogback again. I'd really like to spend some time with the 50 instead of the M60. But look at this crawling along, so smooth. It's like one of the best, one of the best uh, systems out there. I've programmed one of the gestures where I can point two fingers at the screen and it puts on my massaging seat. Although sometimes, especially with the camera mounted, it can't see. I think it blocks the sensors. Let's just double check that. Yeah, I think I've blocked the sensor. So assist plus is on again massage on seat massage oh maybe it did get my gesture control then because it is going not the best massage e-tron has a better massage one thing this car is great at on the highway a i've mentioned range and rolling resistance you put this thing in neutral and it just goes but b is just the noise level it's so quiet this is such harsh pavement that we're on and granted we're going slow but i've never been in a car that i've just like that feels like a was it anechoic chamber is that what it's called where you can't hear anything and just insane why am i touching the wheel i don't need to these green little lines say it's eye tracking there's three eye tracking modules on the uh, display you're probably able to see them from the camera it's just looking at my eyes looking at a head so would i recommend the ix to someone buying a car buying this type of category of vehicle i think it's what it boils down to a lot of things with every vehicle there's pros there's cons in this case the cons are i would say a lot of the weird steering wheel shape the buttons that blind you because they're glass the controls here um you know i think some of the ui stuff's a little bit clunky and and i don't love the the m60 sport tuned suspension i would much rather have the smoother one but, would I, but then the pros are big range, you can still option the smooth suspension, great headlights, uh, amazing sound system, best in the business, and that only is un un unfortunately only available in the M60 is this amazing Bowers and Wilkins. There are a few 50s that were built with it, so I would try and find one of those, one of the early ones with the Bowers and Wilkins. But you get the sense that like, okay, BMW knew what they were doing when they came to build this car. It's a dedicated battery electric platform, not you know, taken from anything else. There's new materials being used like carbon fiber reinforced polymer. And by new, I should say a bit more exotic. It's a carbon tub in a mix with aluminum and some other things, but it's really nicely done. They use all extruded aluminum underneath, creating their own sort of subframes and everything, very similar to how Tesla does it. Um, it just feels great. And the car is so solid. So I'm very impressed with the charging at 200 kilowatts. Uh, looks like we lost our hands free for some reason. Maybe because we're in a construction zone. I don't know. Maybe we've gone, we've gone over speed. Um, yeah, I would highly recommend this. Out of the competition today, you have EQS SUV, which should be very comfortable. I haven't driven it, but I'm driving it in a couple days. I won't be able to tell you about it till the end of the month, I don't think. Um, so EQS SUV, this Rivian R1S. Rivian's a bit different because that's more of an off-roading lifestyle piece. This is definitely very German in the way that it does uh, does its business. Assist Plus back on now that we're in traffic. It, it's truly wonderful. It's built well. It's priced unbelievably well. And I think out of what you could actually walk into a store and buy today, which there's a lot of in-market shoppers, this is the one I would go for, or at least recommend going for as a car to just have a very high quality, wonderful ownership experience with. The big question is, will it hold its value? Because a lot of people don't understand. They just look at it and, and, and walk away. Um, they don't understand how good this thing really is and how nicely it drives. But there you go, They're my 3,000 mile thoughts in the iX, which are 
There's a lot I would change. I would put different seats in. I would go back a little bit. It's like I'd go old school BMW. I'd put the old M wheel on this car, the old three spoke. I'd put the good seats with the thigh uh, support that comes out because the seats are a little bit too shallow. And I'd change the controls to old school BMW controls or controls that are like in the I-4 that just make sense. Assist Plus freaked out and it lost its tracking, I guess. I don't know, maybe there's water on the camera. Don't know, now it's back on. So yeah, I mean, I think a few little changes for sure the steering wheel can't stand this. And I think maybe that's one of my biggest issues, but overall great car and I hope you buy one. And I know a lot of our viewers do own these things and I totally see why. And I think if this was readily available when we were shopping for our e-tron, I would have ended up buying this for Alyssa instead of our e-tron because it's that good. It, it, there's so much, so much good, so much better at things that the e-tron can't do, such as the road tripping world. And I think this has got to be one of the best cars to ever come out of BMW for its intended purpose. And I'm specifically talking about the 50, not the M60. So there you have it. Thanks for watching another out of spec reviews video, 3000 miles with the IX. My thoughts are 100%, don't even think about it. Go to the dealer, pick one up. If you're in the market, I wouldn't hesitate for a moment. The one thing I can't do though, is kind of squeeze around this traffic. So let's do that in big power. It's just, it's very quick, but it, and you can see it surprises other people with how quick it is doesn't need to be that fast. I think the 50 is fine. So, bye. See you on another one. <laughs> See ya.